Welcome to Accounting in Focus. Hi, this is Jeff Ingram, and I'm coming to you today with another Word, WordPress for a Blogger video. And today I want to talk a bit about appearance. And to start off talking about appearance, I want to talk about something that affects both appearance and searchability. It is called your URL links. In WordPress called permas, permalinks. If you notice by default, they're what they call ugly. I'm not sure why they use ugly by default. Probably because it goes back to when WordPress started. I'm not really sure, but you always see like a page ID equals a number. Or you'll have something like this for a post. Where um, it works. It's functional. It has a few drawbacks. One of which is searchability. Being able to read through the URL. Uh, will help draw bots in further to find more of your content to share out. And the other thing is human readability. Yeah, humans, the people we ultimately want to read these things. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in behind the scenes to the permalink settings page. There are a few defaults and different things could work for you. It's something that's worth thinking a little bit about as a blogger. Um, if your blogs will be driven by date, which a lot of blogs are, the most current uh, post is the most relevant according to that theory. A permanently like uh, date and name of post would be useful. Or maybe you don't care about the name, so you're going to go to month and post. You could just use a numeric, which I think kind of defeats the purpose, but hey, it's up to you. Post name. I like mine a little more complicated than that. If you click on this tag up here, it will open up a WordPress page. This WordPress page has all the information about permalinks. And more importantly, it will show you all the dis different uh, custom configurations. You can use year, month number, day, minute, second, post ID, post name. The one I like is category. I like breaking information by category and by name. Um, I think it will probably be what we stick with when a accounting in focus is actually officially launched. However, it's what I'm going to use for now, and unless Kristen tells me she wants different, that's what it's going to stay. You want a slash for there, and a slash before there. We're going to save those settings. And you notice when you come out to the page, if we go to the page, it's now just going to say sample page. Sample page is not connected to a category, no category involved. Let me come down to my categorized post, which would be the only post, the lovely Hello World post brought to you. But you'll notice information listed up here, it is uncategorized. But now let us continue on talking more about the appearance section. We come back here and magically we appear within the appearance section. There are several WordPress supplied themes that come with it. Right now I have 2014 active. Um, however, for a second, let's go back and look at 2010. 2010 is a lot of times what people think of more as of blog or website designs. It's what you would call a fixed design. It's probably fixed with, I'm not sure exactly what it is, but it acts that way. And the major note being that if you change your browser, you start to lose content. So in the age of growing mobile, if your audience is into mobile, uh, you have to either consider uh, creating a mobile design for your site or using what would be considered a more modern site, 2014, which is what you call a reactive design. Now, reactive designs are, I think, pretty neat, and I haven't played around much with them yet. But you notice as I change the width of the site, it responds. 
you know, at first it'll start to push in. If I move too much, it gets even smaller. If I keep moving the site, it will turn it down all the way to what it would probably look like on this, a very long mobile phone. Okay, so that is sort of a nice feature. Uh, it allows you to have the complete functionality of your web website on many different form factors. Um, you don't have to worry about how to make it active with mobile. That is a, sometimes a beneficial thing. Once again, it depends on your audience. If you have a bunch of people, you know, who come to your blog who don't use cell phones uh, to uh, view the internet or to go to blogs, then uh, this isn't super important. However, it is something to consider. Now let's go back to 2010. With end themes, there are some pretty important features to know about. One is widgets. I talked about this a little bit before. Right now, it's about a little bit in depth. You notice in this setting, I have several different widget areas. Right now, they're all in what is called the primary widget area. This can change from theme to theme what that is. So we're gonna leave the search in the primary widget. Uh, there is no save for this. Once you pull them out, they're gone, which means if you're something important and you drag it out, by accident, you have to replace it completely, especially if you use like Amazon or you have an AdSense ad plugged in directly into one. You notice here, I have a search. This is the primary search area. It goes underneath the header down to the footer. We will throw archives into the secondary widget area. And it is actually underneath the primary widget area. Um, in this theme, nothing too different. You were to throw in a page into the first footer. Go back and refresh that. You know, notice now there's a page thing. It's down below the bar, which on this theme would be the, uh, the breakpoint for the, the footer. The more content I have up here, it would just push this all down. And you have several more uh, widget areas within the footer in this particular theme. From theme to theme, if I come up here and go to 2010 or 2014, I'm on 2010, you'll notice that this theme only has a content sidebar, a primary sidebar, and a footer widget. Theme to themes, these will change. Say hello to Thor if you heard him there. And these will change from uh, theme to theme. The best thing to do if you're not sure where they're at is just pull widgets into them and find out where they go. Menus are a way to do navigation in your site. And they're fairly simple. You just create a name. We'll call it Navbar. Very lame name. But it gives you the idea of what it's there for. And now I have one sample page. I'm going to add this to menu. And there's a few things you could say automatically add top level pages to this menu, uh, top primary menu. When you add pages, you add posts, you get some discretion uh, with how they interact with the menu. Once you saved it and you come to your website and you click on it, you will notice something shocking. So I'm in a completely different theme now. Um, nothing really changed. That's because the menu itself is a widget. Pull this out. We'll put this into the content sidebar. You'll notice over here, and this would not be the bar I put it in, in reality. I'm just showing you where the bar would be in this theme. It's over here. If anything, I would swap the search and menu around. So let's go do that real quick. I want the menu up here, the search down here. Very simple to play with your appearance. Uh, it's mainly dragging and dropping. Um, and if things don't quite work the way you want them to, there's always the ability to, um, there is always the ability to uh, add plugins to add functionality, but that will be in a different video. If you come up to your header, this will actually show you your header area. 
So right now it's saying, hey, there's no image selected by default. It will give you a preview of what your header will look like. It will give you the font color. You can change that here quickly in this theme. Let's go choose a completely irrelevant picture. So I don't think I have any relevant pictures for this website yet. Uh, we'll use this image on a recent post of Kristen's, the top 10 college myths. <coughs> Excuse me. You will note that sometimes um, Whoops. We'll choose an actual image, not a Photoshop image. We will then remember to upload it. We'll crop and publish. Um, no. Let's crop right below the mess. We'll lose a little bit at the bottom, but that's okay. Usually for a website, you're going to probably have a, a longer one with width. In a reactive site, the thing you'd have to remember, wow, that is a gigantic image I made there, is that when you make these sorts of changes, wow, that would look horrible, and I would not suggest doing that. Uh, the image should be smaller here, but... Uh, you, you get the idea. Essentially, you can add a, an image very easily into your WordPress site. Hello, Thor again. Now if we go back, I'm so disgusted by the way that looks. I'm turning it off. Move header. Now it's gone away, it will essentially just uh, revert to the site if I remember to save changes. It will revert the site back the way it was. Get rid of the header. And it's like this too, you might have a header in the actual page content, uh, in post, if a uh, banner image. The thing to remember though is you have to consider a reactive site what happens to an image as the site gets smaller. And that's kind of what happened there was the image was so large or so small that it, I believe, must have stretched it out to fit the site. In our background, you could add an image in here. Not a huge fan of background images, but um, there are times they work. Uh, you know, I've seen uh, like uh, the the generic one would probably be a landscaping site that would have grass in the background because they do a lot of mowing. Uh, there are other more subtle pictures you can put in the background. Essentially what that would do is, this site does not have a lot of background, but wherever there is background, it would just add a little image to give a little content to it over here. Uh, nothing very exciting. Just choose an image. I wonder if it will tile it for me. I have nothing designed for a background image. We'll grab this lovely image here. Open it up. And I forgot to save it. Let's use Spooky Tree. I like Spooky Tree. Makes me think of a cow too, so it works really well. Yeah, it looks like it's going to tile it out for us. Do that sort of a creepy accounting vision. Uh, you guys should control the tiling. So you want horizontal or vertical. Uh, I'm just going to say tile everything. Let's make it as ugly as possible. Uh, center. My justifications, and you're just kind of looking like, hey, how do I want it to sort of flow? Oh, let's do let's do right. I like right. Um, attachment scroll or fixed. We'll say scroll. Select the background color. We'll leave that purple. Goes great with the black or black and grays. Really, come back to the site, refresh it, and now we have creepy trees mixed in with my what will end up being my wife's lovely website. I'm sure those will come down as soon as she sees them. And then if you're a bit more advanced, here's a list of all the templates that are available. You can literally just click into comments, change your PHP code if desired. 
if it's a longer, you can actually come in and say, hey, I, I need to make a change to my get comments number. And please look that up and it will actually look up information for you, which can be very helpful, but not in this circumstance. Um, you can upload files if you've changed them uh, locally, you need to upload them to your website. We'll come back up to customize now. Customize is another very useful feature. If you need to change your site title, which you see up here, or you want to change your tagline, or not even display them if you don't want to. There's a quick button to get rid of both of them. Might do that if you have an image that uh, types them out. Change your background color over here. Change your title color up here. This sort of centralizes a lot of the basic stuff. Do you want a header image? You can do that here. Background image, yeah, let's not repeat that anymore. Navigation, do I want a, a top menu? Do I want a secondary menu on the left sidebar? I, I'm gonna add it to a top menu as well. I can set static pages or my latest post to display on my front page. I believe I click on this, it gives me the option to, yes. It gives me the option to go sample page. I don't have a second page built, so it's a very bad idea to do right now. One thing you don't want to do in that scenario is have these things match. That can cause problems for your site. And featured content. Um, this theme has that feature in it. It gives you a slider or a grid. If the theme you have doesn't do it, you can use a plugin to achieve it as well. However, I believe if it's mixed into the theme, it's just CSS, maybe a little JavaScript, um, probably a little bit less abusive to your uh, server. However, I'm not positive on that. But this is all the basics of appearances for a WordPress site. The thing is, don't rush to choose. Take your time. If you see an image and say, wow, this 2013 looks, the colors are horrible. I wish the colors were different, but I like it besides that. Or the image at the top of this one doesn't work for my site, but that's the way I want it laid out. Um, realize that you can customize the themes. They're just a general broad stroke of how your website will be laid out. They are not, the well, they could be if you want them to, but they're not designed to be the actual uh, website. They expect you to, to change them and change the header, maybe the fonts. That's why they give you all these lovely features over here in the appearance section. <coughs> and if you actually want to go look up, you can actually make some decisions right away. Like, I know I want a three column site, or maybe I want a four column because I want to do newspapers, or I don't know what I want, so let me say a two, three, or four column site. And by columns, they're talking about these things right here. So here's the header, here's the footer, here's one column, two column, three columns. This content sidebar, the main content area, and this uh, left sidebar. Uh, one column would have no sidebars. Two columns would have one sidebar. Three columns would have two sidebars. And four columns would have, well, they're not really sidebars at that point. They're really more columns. Or if you're just looking for something to only be a sidebar, you can click on that. I want a left and a right sidebar and one column, or I don't know what I want. If there are certain features that you want to make sure that uh, fit in, these are things you can pick down here, like you want a BuddyPress site, which is, a, I believe, a forum version of WordPress. You can actually, I want to make sure I have theme options. I want to make sure that it's translation ready, or I want to make sure it has threaded comments. I have a type of generic blog, which they have three here. Filter blogging makes a lot of sense, seasonal or holiday. I guess if you're looking for something to temporarily change a website, there's certain colors you want to put in there. But I typically don't, don't get too caught up on outside of columns or potentially responsive fluid or fixed layout. I don't care too much about what colors there are. Those can typically be updated through a decent theme anyway. So let's just go ahead and say car. Because 
if you're at an accounting website, you're probably considering buying a car, which you hopefully can do without using debt, or my wife would be very upset. But it will give you a list of all of these lovely themes that might or might not work for you. Windsor Knot would be lovely. Uh, I grew fond of that in the service. The thing to remember once again, no matter which of these themes I download, I'm not stuck with the text that you see. I'm not stuck with the pages they have, the exact look of it. It's I like that. I like the way this box looks. I like the way this box looks. I like the way the header looks. I like the way the footer looks. You can customize most other things. I hope you found this informative. I hope you will share it. You will subscribe to my wife's accounting videos and to a few WordPress videos here and there done by me. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Feel free to comment below.